It's that time of year again, guys. Everyone on YouTube is doing a spooky Halloween-themed video, so I suppose I should as well. Quick side note, I've got a very sore throat, so that's why my voice sounds really weird. Sorry. But today I would like to speak to you guys about a particular horror game that I hold very dear to my heart, and therefore it's on the Grizzly Gems as my second Halloween special, and that game is... Dead Space. Now this is a game that I think kindled my interest in horror games. I played some games with horror elements in them beforehand, but never really saw myself enjoying horror games because I don't really get that scared when I play them. However, games like Dead Space and subsequent releases afterwards have really pulled me in the direction of games that would lead to things like Five Nights at Freddy's or Slender or Amnesia and some of these other horror classics and I think in a lot of ways it's a very important title in the chronology of gaming that we know today and its influences can still be seen even in this day and age of horror. So let's take a look. So Dead Space is set in the distant future of 2508 where humanity is now a space-faring civilization in need of supplies due to its expanding population and dwindling native resources. The USG, or United Spacefaring Guild, have created ships capable of cracking planets so that their crews can mine valuable resources to ship back to their homeworlds such as Earth to sate the needs of society. Starting the game off, we play as Isaac Clark, a gifted engineer who is part of a makeshift crew of the quick response vessel, the USG Kellyan, make their way to one such planet cracker, the USG Ishimura, which has run out of power in a restricted area of space. Isaac's girlfriend Nicole is also on board and as such Isaac volunteers for the mission in order to make sure she's safe. The crew disembark to find nobody home and the ship in disrepair, and upon further investigation, our small band of heroes do meet the crew, and they're not very hospitable. Run, Isaac, run, 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 please, run, run, run. Now since the release of this game there have been several sequels and spin-offs to this franchise but at the time of its release horror games were pretty scarce in the AAA market. This game is pre Five Nights at Freddy's, Slender and Amnesia so in a lot of ways it could be argued that it may have helped pave the way for the renewed interest in the genre but for me in a lot of ways this was the first proper horror game I ever played. And I know a lot of people will argue that this game leans too heavily on actions similar to games like Resident Evil 4 in order to keep the flow of the game interesting. But unlike its sequels, I think Dead Space's balance between shooting the breeze and shitting your pants is... pretty good. Because I mean, let's be honest, being alone in a cabin in the woods knowing there's a bunch of killers roaming nearby in the woods? That's pretty scary. Being alone in a tower block full of zombies? Pretty scary. Being alone in a giant spaceship full of horribly disfigured members of its dead former crew trying to rip you limb from limb and turn you into one of them with no chance of rescue? In space? Mum, no, games are too stressful. No, I've had enough. No, no more channel videos. It's the last one. I'm, it's too stressful. I'm going. No more. Bye, guys. i got to go. I've had enough. Yet, although we play mostly in an isolated environment on our own with nothing more than the necromorphs to keep us company, Isaac does get to interact with other characters during the story. Two of Isaac's shipmates, Kendra Daniels and Zach Hammond, guide us from objective to objective using the equivalent of a low-quality Skype call. There's also zealous Dr. Mercer, who believes everything's great and it's all part of God's plan. Oh, by the way, he likes collecting people's heads. There's Dr. Kine, who you think you can trust, but he's a little, uh, wound up. There are the fine men of the USM Valor. Dude, are, are you okay? You good? You okay? Yeah. You right, buddy? Yep. You okay? Okay, bye-bye. And also, you'll occasionally find a few surviving members of the crew. Fuck. 
witness the conviction of a true believer! Oh, 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 oh. No. No more. No. Bad enough. That said though, Isaac's also got a lot of quirks to his arsenal due to being an engineer. He's pretty nifty at using engineering tools as makeshift weapons such as the iconic plasma cutter, line gun, ripper or contact beam. The aim of the game's combat is the lovely dismemberment system which allows you to slice 7 days of sunshine out of your enemies. Plus just to remind you, one of these weapons is called the ripper. Here's an example of what it means to get ripped. I think I got him. However, I think the most important element of this game is its immersive atmosphere. All the menus in the games are displayed through Isaac's suit known as a rig, so other than the pause menu, everything you do is in real time. Item management doesn't pause the game, Isaac's health displayed on his back, ammo is displayed when readying weapons, audio logs flesh out the story and don't interrupt the gameplay, and for the most part even the loading screens are very brief. I mean I replayed this game on the Xbox One pretty recently due to it being backward compatible and here's how long the loading screens take at the end of a level. I mean there aren't even cutscenes apart from the ending so for the most part the flow of the game is very tight with little downtime for the player. And considering this game is rife with enemies of all shapes and sizes for your first playthrough you'll most likely feel very uneasy. Especially when the necromorph pops up in a place you think should be a safe zone or an out of bounds area for the AI when you've been trained to be told and taught this place is safe. And it may sound like the game is nothing more than a jump scare simulator at this point, and there are some bits here and there, but often it's the subtler elements of the sound design or level pacing that really get under your skin. I mean, if you listen really closely in certain areas, you can hear people whispering in the walls. Some areas such as the space vacuum segments only allow for Isaac's breathing, heart rate and a vital sign indicator for company, which if you run into a necromorph even speeds up. Bodies you pass one minute disappear whilst returning to them later on. Some necromorphs appear more human to mess with your perception of the divide between monster and victim. Isaac hallucinates from time to time too, and this allows for some incredibly well made moments of tension which lead to bits like this. No, 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 I'm off, no, no, I've had enough of this, no. Now to round off the story, Isaac spends most of the game fixing odds and ends on the ship. Basically the crew of the Kellyan realise they're in big trouble and as such try their best to get the ship's communications fixed in order to call for help. They manage to contact a conveniently placed nearby war vessel which unintentionally picks up an escape pod containing a necromorph during their approach. The crew die and the ship crashes into the ship. Hammond dies, Mercer dies, Kine dies, Nicole is already dead and Kendra dies. However, before Kendra bites the dust, she betrays Isaac, tries to steal the marker as part of her super secret mission to retrieve it, knowing the risks with the Valor nearby as backup, until she accidentally wakes up a nasty hive mind creature on the nearby planet's colony where the marker was found. Still with me? Okay. So after Kendra gets her just rewards, Isaac kills the creature, gets out of dodge, and has a little moment to relax. Everyone's dead. He's been through hell. And now he's finally free of the nightmare of the Ishimura. Jesus Christ! So yeah, that was Dead Space, probably one of the best horror video games ever made in my opinion, and although it's not necessarily the scariest or the best at horror tropes in video games, it certainly does a lot of things right. But more than any other game that I can think of, Dead Space just is the best at immersing you in the environment, making you feel like part of the furniture. You get into that zen moment of video game playing where 
everything around you and all the thoughts you've had previously just melt away. You don't worry about your bills or your job or your cat. You don't worry about your neighbors or your parents or anyone around you. It just sets you into the environment and it kind of pulls you in and doesn't let go. And I can't think of another video game that does it as well as Dead Space due to there not really being any menu systems, very little HUD elements, and all the information you need is part of the characters or part of the world you're in. So you don't feel oftentimes that you're playing a game, you just feel like you're there with the characters in the scenarios fighting for your life, and that's amazing. And lastly, I will admit that Dead Space is one of those games where it's best to play once and then the subsequent playthroughs really don't add much more to the experience. I mean, when you realise how the mechanics work, the item placement, how you can best use selling items and buying upgrades and such, it loses a lot of its draw because you've been there, done that, and it doesn't bring anything new to the table. I mean, when I finished the game, I had over 100,000 spare credits worth of items which I sold, upgraded all four weapons of which I only really used the plasma cutter, and generally, it's not really a true survival horror game in regards to, if you're pretty good at third-person shooter games, you shouldn't have much trouble. But that said, I think it is a horror experience you need to play if you're a fan of horror, or even just a fan of playing something new and different to what you're used to, play Dead Space. Don't play Dead Space 3, maybe play Dead Space 2, but more than anything, the core of the Dead Space franchise of number one, I don't think has ever been emulated in the rest of the game series or other ones around it, so I highly recommend this game, it's one of the must-play games in my library. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this more spooky Halloween edition of the Grizzly Gems. There'll be another one next year, don't know what I'm going to play yet, but I hope you guys have a good Halloween, and I will see you guys later. Ooh. That was scary.